Bill uh, Cher wrote a piece in the week a couple of weeks ago where he he made it, and this is interesting thinking from someone who's so supportive of Obama. And I think it reveal. I think there's two ways of thinking about Obama's approach on the budget, which I want to use this article to get into briefly. So, basically, it, the name of the piece was "Why Obama's Legacy Doesn't Need a Grand Bargain." So, you know, obviously, you, you just if you're accepting Bill's premise here that Obama's already accomplished a lot through things like the stimulus and health care and all the rest. But where it gets interesting is he talks about the things that we remember presidents for doing as great accomplishments are mostly th- programs, right? So we remember uh, whether it's uh, Lyndon Johnson and Medicare or Eisenhower's interstate highway system or, uh, you know, uh, um, Teddy Roosevelt and National Park System. And he gives several other examples. And then he talks about why fiscal deals are unsustainable as legacies because they change. They're so susceptible to, uh, to change in political currents. And he talks about Bill Clinton's budget surplus, which is a great example of this. So Bill Clinton, was, we all know, left office with a great, you know, big, with a balanced budget, big surplus. And that, you know, it's a, and as Bill says, that's a good Democratic talking point. But what happened to that surplus? Well, one former Clinton aide lamented, what it turned out what we had done in the end was enable George W. Bush's right-wing class war because all those uh, surpluses just turned into Bush's massive tax breaks for the top 1% or 2%. So even that fiscal accomplishment didn't last a year after the Clinton presidency. So the point being here that even if some grand bargain, grand portrayal was stuck. There's no historical precedent for that, like, lasting. So it's a foolish thing to expend political capital on. And I have to say, I think that there are two, and again, I think that there's two ways of thinking about this in the Obama White House. I think, yeah, I'm convinced that Obama really does want this deal, and I think it's horrible. And I think the things that he's proposed are totally atrocious. Call your congressman pressure against it. But I think that they think it's a win either way, because I think that the other way that the Obama people see this is that they come out with these proposals on a pretty regular basis that are right-wing proposals that uh, meet more than halfway what the Republicans are always ranting and raving about, and then Republicans always reject them. And what happens is, is that mostly the story is, look at that, you know, Obama seems like a reasonable guy, and Republicans are crazy. Now, I don't think that this strategy is sustainable because I think you can only so long can you go out and push for uh, policies that, of course, the actual center of America hates, like slashes in Medicare and Social Security. But I think that that's the political thinking behind uh, these continued pushes. I think, one, in the worst-case scenario, I think it's true, they actually do want a deal like this and they're committed to it, and they believe in it, and that's absurd. I think the second way they process it is they can keep winning points on Republicans and having Republicans own goal themselves because Republicans always look so unreasonable because Obama's constantly trying to basically give them what they want. Uh, and, I, and I think, you know, again, I think in either scenario, it's another reason why we need a left that is... Uh, Uh, needs to be catered to and present in the debate as well.